Something is missing, and I bet you know what it is. That's right, it's the video I was going to do on these macro keypads weeks ago. Well, here it is. This is it. Before I get started on this, I do want to very briefly explain my absence this last month or so. In January, I separated from the company I was working for and started looking for alternatives to going back to another cubicle farm or poorly disguised one and having meetings about how to best plan our meetings. I did a few very interesting projects and I'm still working on a couple of those, but I did end up somewhere. I can't disclose where, but I can tell you the work I've been doing up to this point has been taking on average 16 hours or so a day of my time. This was all a timing thing, not a normal clip by any stretch, and I'm not complaining in the least because I get to be a part of something that has the potential to improve a lot of people's lives. However, I can't talk about that either. What I can tell you is that I'm mostly through the hard bit, so I should get a bit more time here and there to make videos again. There may be slow patches here and there, but I'll try to make up for it with neat gadgetry and sheer charm, or at least neat gadgetry. So, on to those neat gadgets. This is a wooden thing with buttons and a screen. It doesn't beep or even boop, but what it does do is pretend to be a keyboard and mouse so you can do tricks. It has a menu where you can select different functions for each button, but it also has the ability to encrypt and store passwords. I'm not going to get into the code here, though I'll post some example code on the repo and give links to the necessary CircuitPython libraries to make this yourself. The wiring is probably very straightforward if you're keen to do this sort of thing in the first place. You'll want to choose GPIO pins that you wouldn't want for other purposes later on, which on the Pico leaves plenty of options. Making a full keyboard this way would require a bit more trickery, but we're not doing that because you can buy keyboards that have been pretty good for many decades, so why go all mid-90s with it? Soldering can be a little finicky depending on how you build things. I used my laser cutter to cut four layers, the topmost having 14 mm squares spaced 3 mm apart, to hold the key switches. I also used this breakout board and LCD combo that I found on Amazon, affiliate link in the description because you like things and I like money because it buys things, so that all works out quite nicely. The logic is probably the most interesting and flexible part of this whole thing, of course, so that's what I really want to focus on. If you'd like to build what I've built here, I'll have code on the repo for that, but I encourage you to try from scratch, because what you'll end up with will fit you and your needs better. In fact, I have several of these, and I'll be showing you the best one here in a little bit. So, this version is admittedly my second, but the first one has some different features that require a little more explanation. This one requires a pin to be entered, treating the numbers like 1 through 8. But there's a catch or two. First, you need to know that the numbers are what they are, and second, you need to know what to hit to tell it you've put in your pin. Let's assume you're a bad actor and you figure that out, or at least you think you have. If you put in an incorrect pin, the device accepts it for a very simple reason. The pin is also part of the encryption, but in a somewhat unique way. The way this device encrypts a password is by using a simple transposition cipher or Caesar cipher. If you've seen A Christmas Story, you'd know this as Annie's secret decoder ring, which wouldn't have been required if only Ralphie knew the eight most common used letters of the alphabet, A-S-I-N-T-O-E-R, and how to eliminate possibilities by counting letter frequencies and trial and erroring it for a couple of hours or so at most. People a bit smarter than Ralphie, who is admittedly rather young and focused on other priorities, might think they have a shot at breaking my code because I said it was a simple transposition cipher, but I kind of lied. It's a transposition cipher per letter of text that changes order and number of rounds based on the pin entered. So if you enter an incorrect pin, it will simply spit out gibberish when you hit the buttons. It won't help you get my passwords by plugging it in and opening Notepad. Could this be broken by a cryptography expert with tools and a good sized computer? Probably. Do you think they want to steal my utility bill or Netflix password? Probably not. Do you think anyone who got within reach of this device would know how to break into it or what it was even for? Even less likely. But let's take another approach. I mentioned that this acts like a keyboard and mouse, so why not use it as such? Well, this is my missing island keypad for those keyboards that don't have the keys in what is obviously the most logical and irrefutably useful manner, which isn't simply my opinion because this is the internet and I have the camera. When I plug this in and I press these buttons, they do the things that the buttons are supposed to do. That is until I say the phrase, 
I left, right? But I always end up down home. Now, when I press any of the top keys, it enters one of six pre-programmed passwords, which I could cycle through with another key, but I don't. If you press one of the arrow keys, the device returns to being a keyboard island. This is pretty neat, I think. My wife has access to one of these so that she can access all of the accounts that I've chosen the password for associated with the house, like the utilities, so she can log in and do things when I'm not available. It can also perform keyboard combinations and macros as long as you have the patience to program. And that brings me to the last version of this, which is the first version I made for the purposes I'm about to describe. Here I go describing them. When I'm doing these videos, I'm almost always using a teleprompter. I can do without it, but it helps me to deliver my content in a way that I feel is more accurate, thoughtful, and monotonously read from a teleprompter. You may have noticed that my right arm rarely moves, and from time to time you might even see something in my hand. I'm going to explain the magic now, so if you want to remain young and innocent, turn away now. That thing is my mouse, and I'm using it to scroll the wheel to control the speed, occasionally running it screwards when I back up. Adding the ability to move my right arm during videos would effectively double the amount of visible appendages I can wave at you, which should boost video performance overall, I think. That's why I've built this macro device with pedals. The keypad is just a keypad that functions similarly to the device I showed first, and there's a slightly smaller screen here on the main case. The selector button on the top is to change things the other buttons and pedals do, but I don't really use it that often. The pedals are the key components of what this does. With these three pedals, I can increase or decrease teleprompter speed, as well as freeze it momentarily if I need to, to have a moment to get my eyes back to the center of the screen, a crucial detail in the mind-bending illusion that I consistently know what to say at all times. I will link to all the pieces parts I use to make all of the things I've shown here, so if you'd like to tinker around a bit with this idea, please feel free to make Amazon give me money for giving you the link to pay the same price you'd pay searching it on your own anyway. And feel free to pick up a few items while you're using the affiliate link, like a lawnmower or something. I know I didn't really show build steps here, and I'm hoping that doesn't deter you from building something like this. I had every intention when I made the pedal version of this to document the next one or two I made, but I had them built before I realized I hadn't recorded any of it. I would go back and make another, but I have to wait on more parts, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm a bit tight on time presently. If you're still having a good time, why don't you do what all humans do when they're having a good time and click on a vague pixelated representation of an upward pointed digit that makes us better than most animals. In the next video or two, I'll be talking about some more Shelly devices like this Duo GU10, which has absolutely transformed my main bathroom into a completely new room with the ability to shift from bright and modern to warm and rustic with a couple of settings. I'll also be getting back to the shop to take apart a suspicious cheap IP camera from Amazon. I've been considering diving into the smarter circuits of computers a bit more by exploring my paltry retro collection that sits on either side of me. If this is something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments. That would be very helpful. Well, thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue exploring smarter circuits.